If you have your Bibles, I'm in Proverbs chapter 3, beginning in verse 5. Let's stand for the reading of the word. Amen. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father, the son in whom he delighteth. And may God add his blessing to the reading of the word. May be seated. Amen. I want to talk about trust this morning. Trust is confidence in the integrity, the ability, and good character of another. It's trust is one in whom we have confidence and we place it there. Custody, something committed into the care of another. It's synonymous with confidence, dependence, faith, hope, reliance, certainty, and belief. So I want to ask you today if you trust the Lord. Because I think sometimes we don't act like we trust the Lord. We say that we trust Him, but our actions often don't reflect a trust in the Lord. We live in a world where trust is a costly commodity. There are few things, few people, and few systems that you can put your trust in. We just saw a picture of the Twin Towers. Those buildings were built to be impenetrable. And within days of that incident that has forever changed our life, it is a day of infamy much like the one we experienced in World War II at Pearl Harbor. Yes. The economy fell. Household products that we trusted in were going out of business. I live in Bowie on 301, which used to be one of two major places in this area where you could buy cars. And I watched one after another of those car dealerships close, and they became vacant lots. People lost their homes because they trusted in our economy. I find in God's Word that there are over 180 scriptures, 88 scriptures in the Psalms alone, about trust. This tells me that trust is important to the Lord. Trust is synonymous with faith and belief. And we know that the Word says without faith it is impossible to please the Lord. Amen. We study David because we know that he was a man after God's own heart. We study Abraham because he was a friend of God. 
Why were they friends? Why was David a man after God's own heart? Because he trusted in the Lord. They trusted in the Lord. Trust, faith, belief, whatever you call it. It is the commodity of heaven. Amen. It's the currency of God. Despite our lack of trust, our God is altogether trustworthy. Yes. Yes. Yes, he is. And the Bible says in this passage that if we will acknowledge him, he will direct our paths. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Trust is important. The famous preacher Dwight Moody once said, Trust in yourself, and you are doomed to disappointment. Amen. Trust in friends, and they will die and leave you. Amen. Trust in money, and you may have it taken away from you. Amen. Trust in your reputation, and some slanderous tub may blast it. Amen. But trust in God, and you are never to be confounded Amen. in time for eternity. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's sad to think that there are some people you can't trust. But if there is one person we can trust, it is the Lord. He remains trustworthy even when human beings are not. Trusting God is critical to living a victorious life. Human nature fights against the idea of trusting God. We want to trust in anything but God. We want to trust ourselves. We think that our little pea brains can solve our problems. But how many know there are problems that we are right up to the wall and we can't do anything? except the Lord intervene. How many have been there? Some of us are here right now. Amen? We're walking around with a lot of baggage. A lot of things that are going on in our lives. And the Lord doesn't say that He's just going to lift those things off if we trust Him. But He does say, I'll walk with you. I'll be there for you. I'll bring you wisdom. And I'll bring you deliverance. But we have to trust Him. And I think we decide, let's figure out what we're going to do. Instead of trusting Him. Let's do something. Somebody's got to do something. But we don't think about trusting Him. We don't think about what God wants us to learn in the journey. We don't think about what we are gaining spiritually when we go through a problem. And see, with every situation, God wants to impart a new strength, a new tool, a new weapon Amen. for you to fight so you get through the next battle right. and the next battle right. and the next battle. Because see, He didn't promise that we were just going to be in a rose garden when we got saved. Amen? We are going to have highs and lows. Yes. People say all the time, God helps those who help themselves. How many know that that is not scriptural? It's, you find it. It's not in here. And people over the pulpit will say, God helps those who help themselves. We walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. 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 Trust doesn't come easy. Amen. It requires a commitment. It requires knowing. It requires believing. It is believing. A chicken and a pig were walking down the road together when they came to a sign in front of a building that said, Annual Fundraiser, Ham and Egg Breakfast. <laughs> and the chicken said to the pig, Hey, that's right up our alley. Why don't we go in and help? To which the pig replied, 
That's easy for you to say. For you, it's just a contribution. For me, it'll be talking a total commitment. <laughs> How many of us feel like that pig sometimes in our situation? We're willing to give a token here and there. We're willing to trust him with some things. We're even willing to trust him on Sunday. But then we put Jesus up on the shelf during the week and work it out and trust our own abilities, our own strengths. So the question is, church, do we trust the Lord? Did you know that it was the lack of trust in God that prevented Moses and Aaron from leading the people into the promised land? Right. Numbers 20 verse 12 says, Because you didn't trust me, the Lord says, Because you did not trust me enough to demonstrate my holiness to the people of Israel, you will not lead them into the land that I'm giving them. Trust is important to the Lord. Have you ever had a time when you're reading the Word and a scripture just sort of left off the page at you and it looked like the words were just more prominent and they were brighter? That's when the Holy Spirit is telling you to pay attention. He's trying to tell you something. And I had such an occurrence. It doesn't happen all the time, but I had such an occurrence not too long ago. Right before all the things that were beginning to happen on my job were taking place. And it's been my habit for a number of years to, to read a song or a proverb right before I start working and give the day to the Lord and ask the Lord to use me and I got to Psalm 118, verses 8 and 9. And it said, It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in people. It's better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. And I read one translation where it said, basically, don't trust in important people because they can't help you. Little did I know I'd soon be facing a situation where my natural inclination was to reach out to some important people on my behalf. But the hand of the Lord stayed me and said, do not trust in princes. And the Lord stepped in and vindicated and moved and exalted me and exonerated me all by himself. I have no man to thank for what God did. Amen. Give the Lord some praise. He's a faithful God. Yes, he is. He'll bring you out. He brought me out, and I'm a witness that he will bring you out. Amen. Despite our lack of trust, the Lord remains altogether trustworthy. The Lord already knows that we're going to blow it. He already knows that we're inherently faithless and that we want to rely on ourselves before we trust Him. But because He loves us and because He is altogether trustworthy, He still intervenes. 2 Timothy 2 tells us that if we are faithless, He will remain faithless for he cannot disown himself. He's promised to trust. Yes. He's promised to be trustworthy yes. to us. Yes. And so he remains trustworthy. Yes. Deuteronomy 7 says, Know ye therefore that the Lord your God is God. Yes. Amen. He is the faithful God, yes. keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and are called by his name and keep his commands. 1 Corinthians 1 9. God, who has called you into fellowship with his son Jesus Christ, our Lord, is faithful. Our God can be trusted even when we don't understand all his dealings. 
He warns in our passage not to despise correction. Correction or chastening is a sign of his love. It fosters wisdom and strength. It prepares us yes. for the next battle. Amen. And it's a sign of his presence. And oftentimes, you know, you'll say, well, I don't feel the Lord. It feels dry and barren. I feel abandoned. I feel alone. But I'm here to tell you, it is in those seasons yes. that yes. God is closer still. We need to pray in God, ask the Lord what to do yes. when we are facing our battles and our trials. In order to be successful, we must be led by the Spirit. Amen. We must acknowledge Him. Yes. And the Word says He will direct our paths. Amen. Sometimes when we don't know what to do, this is what you do when you don't know what to do. You acknowledge God. You lean on Him. You trust Him. And He will come yeah. through. Yes. When we don't trust Him, and we take things into our own hands, He is a God of freedom. And He'll let you. He will let you. He may warn you. But he will let you take the path that you chose. And Solomon said, there's a way that seems right to a man. But they're in their own, it's destruction. We must be led by the Spirit. A few months ago, I went with some friends and we went to see that film, uh, Heaven is Real. And there's a scene that I'm sure many of us can relate to where the father has left his child's bedside and he goes to the hospital chapel to pray for his baby boy who is dying. The doctors have not given them much hope. This little boy has a severe fever and he's slipping in and out of consciousness. And he's praying and he's crying, and he's begging God to save this little boy. And in this scene, he kicks the chair in front of him, knocks it down, and he yells at God, don't take my son. How many of us have been there? I know I've cried out for people in this church. I've cried out for my mom and my dad. Nobody was angrier with God than when they took my father. I had a visitation from the Lord in that room, and I didn't appreciate it until years later. Angels came, and I heard the Lord speaking. But in that moment, I wanted to know why he would deliver him, why he was taking him. And I was angry with the Lord. But how many know the Lord's ways are higher? And the Lord knows what's best. And the Lord knew the beginning and the end of my father's journey. The fact is, in this moment, in this film, in my own life, there was nothing that father could do. Fathers are programmed to fix things. Am I right, Bishop Kilby? <laughs> Men generally want to be the go-to people. Amen. I've seen it with my dad. I've seen it with my uncle. My uncle called me yesterday and gave me ten feeds of wisdom to do. You know, and he said, I know you probably only have to take five of them, but just do what I said. I've seen it with my bosses. But there are just some things that daddies can't fix. Amen. This was one of those moments for this man. I've had these moments, you've had these moments. But our daddy God can. Amen. 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 It is in these times that we must trust and rely 
on the faith of our fathers yes. and a faithful and altogether trustworthy God. We have to trust the outcome even when it doesn't line up with what we want. Amen. And I know that's hard, people. But you have to trust first and foremost that the Lord loves you. Yes. The Lord loves what concerns you. The Lord knows more than you do. Parents, believe it or not, He loves your children more than you do. And sometimes it's difficult to believe that. But trust me on this. Yes. He knows them. Amen. He made them. Yes. He entrusted them to you. But He loves them more than you do. He loves you more than you can imagine. He knows you. He knows you right down to the hairs on your head. You don't even know how many hairs you have. But the Lord knows you. He is intimately aware because when he knitted you in your mother's womb he made the recipe he designed you he planted you there and he planted you there with destiny and purpose and it's up to you and I to trust him to take us on this journey and be successful Amen. 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 My mom used to always say that scripture in Isaiah that my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. I'm kind of glad that he who sits on the circle of the earth, yes. he who framed the worlds and set every star in the heavens, he who planted me in my mother's womb and knows me is in control. Scientists can't figure out how the worlds stay on the rotation and I stay on. <coughs> And that same God that is the glue to our universe who could with one finger send it into a completely different orbit is concerned about you and I. Do you think maybe he could handle whatever problem we're going through? Do you think maybe he knows what's in your bank account? Do you think Maybe he knows what you're going through. Yes, he does. See, I know most of us think we're special and nobody's gone through what we're going through. Nobody's been there. Nobody's been through what I'm going through. And I'm special. And even God can't do what needs to be done because I'm special. My, my situation is different. But I'm here to tell you, saints, no, it's not. No, it's not. These things that you and I are going through are common to man. We live in a fallen world. The God of this world is not here to make either any one of us succeed. He's here to stop destinies. He's here to lie, to steal, to kill, to destroy, to thwart the plans of God for your life. That's his job. Amen. He's here to bring chaos. He's here to cause evil to rise up. Yes. But we serve more than a conqueror. Amen. He's a defeated foe. Yes. We serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Unbelievers will often say, well, if God is real, why did this even happen? Angrily, they try to blame God for the ills of this world. 
They want to force you and I to justify why God let something happen. And the fact, or it, the fact of the matter is, no matter how it may look, God is there and God is still in control. Amen. And because we live in a fallen world and because we make bad choices, there are consequences and bad things happen. Amen? It isn't because God isn't on the scene and in control, but he wouldn't be God if he didn't give us free will. And so we make bad choices. And we do bad things to one another. And bad things happen. But the Bible says where sin doth abound, his grace even more abound. Now how is this grace to abound? You and I are his vessels of grace. He has imparted to you and I his spirit. And we are the grace that needs to be extended to a lost and a dying world. Amen? We are the ones who are supposed to be multiplying by the thousands as believers. And see, I think we still think we're just supposed to come on Sunday, worship the Lord, have a good time, get a good, good message, and then go off and do our thing the rest of the week. But I'm here to tell you that our God cares about souls. And if we love Him, and if we trust Him, we won't let a day go by where we don't share our faith. And that may not always be a trap. That may not always be going somewhere and saying something. That may just be shining. That may just be walking out your faith as a living evangelist, a living epistle. Yes. Amen? Amen? We're on secular jobs where we can't walk around on government time or our business owner's time preaching the gospel. But we've got lunch hours where our co-workers might come. And that's an opportunity to pray with them if nothing else. They need to see you successful. They need to see you walking out this walk successfully. And if they don't see it, then they don't believe. And if they don't believe, then they can't know him. And if they don't know him, they're lost. This is our responsibility. We have to leave our problems at the altar. When I talk to people and just hear some of the things going on in our body, it, it, it breaks my heart. Because if I could see you in the spirit, I would see so many of you walking around with a big huge sack full that's very heavy. That's a complete burden that you're walking around with. Some of you are almost bent over with the burden of what you are carrying. But Jesus said, take my yoke, for my burden is light. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. So I, I, I want to ask you today to trust Him enough to leave those problems. Take that burden off your back and put it at the foot of the cross. Get to the end of your fretting and put it on the altar. I know that it's a constant struggle to relinquish our internal inclination to trust and bear the burden. Some of us will say, we don't even want to bother God with this little thing. I can handle it. It's okay. Some of you don't even believe that God is able to do something about your situation. And so you just you're just walking through. You're just walking through the motions. 
And you believe. Don't get me wrong. You're, you're all believers. But in the deepest part of you, you don't really believe that God can do anything about your situation. And so you're carrying it. And you're burdened down with it. And I'm here to tell you that God wants to lift that burden off of you. Amen. He wants to take it and He wants to handle it yes. if you'll let Him. Amen. And when we release it, some of us want to go back and pick it back up. <laughs> Amen? We'll go back because we've been programmed to pick it back up. And we'll sing the songs. I'm going to lay down my burdens down by the riverside. And we'll walk right out the door, pick it back up from the altar, and walk out the door with it. Because we don't trust Him. We dust it off from the altar, and we don't trust Him. And you hear it because we keep rehearsing it. Keep talking about it. Pastor Cachadon used to say, don't curse it. Don't rehearse it. God's going to bless it. God's going to reverse it. Let God reverse it, people. God, He loves you. He loves you. Put your hands on your heart. And I just want you to say out loud, God loves me. God loves me. Say it again. God, God loves me. Loves me. Oh, God. Say it again. God loves me. Do you believe yes. that God loves you? Yes. 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 Glory to God. Yes. yes. I don't want you to ever forget. That God loves you. Yes, He does. Yes, He does. And if you're here today and you have not determined that Jesus is Lord, do you know that God still loves you? He's just waiting for you to come in, but He still yes. loves you. We're just not that smart. I have a friend who always says, he that knows not and knows not that he knows not is a fool. That's right. You don't know that you don't know that. I, I think I'm going to get a cup. I keep telling her I'm going to get a cup and we're going to put these on our desks. Because there, there's a lot of arrogance and people that just think they know. And they, the fact is, we don't know. We don't know what's coming down the pike tomorrow. Only thing we know is something's coming. Might be good, might be bad, might be in between, but it's coming. But the Lord knows. And I found out that he that knows not and knows not that he knows not is actually scriptural. Proverbs 28, 26. 26 says, if you think you know it all, you're a fool for sure. Real survivors learn wisdom from others. Sounds the same to me. So today, I, I want you to picture that situation. That wayward child, that financial problem, that marriage, that disease, that struggle, whatever it is. I want you to close your eyes and picture it at the foot of the cross. Some of you need to bring that situation to the foot of the cross. And then I want you to picture the blood of Jesus running all over it. 
covering it, saturating it like a waterfall. Just picture the blood like a waterfall going all over your situation. It's drenched in the blood. It's covered. It's handled. It's handled by the blood. When we pray, we are in essence taking these things to the cross. And if we trust God, we'll leave them there. We will trust God for the outcome. Anything else stays His hand. Don't forget that. If you want to walk back to the altar and pick it back up again, don't expect God to do a thing. Because He'll stay His hand. If you trust Him, you stop letting the devil beat you up. See, because he's going to be in this ear reminding you, telling you about it, trying to convince you to rehearse it. But what does the Bible say that we do with the devil? Resist him. Resist him. And he'll do what? Flee. You know what flee means? He'll run like a bat out of you know where away from you. I'm just being frank. Preacher's probably not supposed to say that, right, Bishop? I'm sorry. But that's how quickly he will run from you if you will resist him. See, he's a defeated foe. And we elevate him and put him next to the Lord. But he is no contest. For Jesus. Amen. Follow the pattern. Yes. You have to tell God, Daddy God, that you want Him to handle it. And then you have to just wait and trust Him. And I guarantee you, your outcome will be beyond and above everything you thought about. There are ditches, there are mountains, there are valleys, there are highs, there are lows in this journey. And everybody's got to go through something. Jesus went through something for you. So if we're called by his name, he says, In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Amen? We're more than conquerors through Christ Jesus, if we believe. So what do we do while we're waiting? We worship him. We worship him. And I'm not talking about singing songs. I'm not come, talking about coming in here and clapping and rejoicing. I'm talking about you and God worshiping the Lord. Where your focus is not on you. Your focus is not on your problem. But you are worshiping Him Amen. just because of who He is. If He never does anything. He's worthy of your worship. Amen. 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 I know this isn't a shout, get up and dance message, but I'm going to tell you a truth that will last you a lifetime Amen. if you trust Him. Trust in God. Hallelujah. Trust in God. How do we worship? How do we get into the glory? 100% focus on Him. No distractions. No songs that focus on you. No songs that focus on what he did. But songs that speak to him. 
we sing a song, turn your eyes upon Jesus and look full into his wonderful face and the things of this earth grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. That's how you worship him. That's how you worship him. And when we will spend time worshiping him, we don't have time to spend time on the problem. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Unless you're a schizophrenic, you can't do two things at the same time. And we're talking about a king. We're talking about the highest that there is. I was standing up at the sink washing dishes the other day and I said, Lord, how did you come to be? And he said, I am. I always was and I am. He was and is in the present and in our past and in our future. And there is none like him. Nothing higher. Nothing greater. And we have a privilege to worship Him. We have a privilege to give Him a gift that only we can give Him. So if you love Him today, I just want to encourage you to spend a moment worshiping Him. Giving Him praise. Giving Him glory throughout the day. Remember that He loves you. Yes. Trust Him. Amen. Worship builds trust. You know what else builds trust? Getting to know the Lord. Some of us are not reading the Word. You know how I know? Because the Word changes you from glory to glory to glory. If you are not reading the Word, and I don't care if, if it's, a, I'm not going to say, you have to read an hour, you have to finish the Bible in a whole year, I'm not talking about that. If you can't read but a verse every day, you need to be in this Bible. Because this Bible tells you about the Lord. Every line points to Him. God wants to speak to you through His Word. And when you're trusting in that situation, a scripture ought to come out before anything else because you spend some time in the Word. Get it on tape. Get a teaching tape. Get some scripture cards. Do something to feed your spirit and feed your soul so that you know who he is and you can be changed from glory to glory. If you have time before you go to sleep, get a reading uh, plan. You can Google reading plan. You can go to I Love Marilyn Hickey's. Five chapters, done. By the end of the year, you're done. Five chapters of Scripture and the Proverbs. There's your reading plan. If you want to do that. If you don't finish, don't beat yourself up. Pick it up the next day. But do something. Because blessed are those who read this Word. You'll be changed by it. That's the miracle. This is a living, breathing book. And the miracle is it changes us. Wisdom. There's no greater wisdom than what is in this book. Every challenge that you can possibly face is covered in this book. They're apples of gold and pieces of silver. It's like honey. The word is sweet. 
It's better than any novel. Sure enough. It's more exciting than any mystery novel you've ever wanted to read. Amen. I don't care what kind of genre you're into. It's in the book. People are afraid of reading the Old Testament and they don't understand. But I'm telling you, there's some drama in this book. Exciting stories are in this book. Miraculous things beyond your imagination are in this book. And these things open you to the possibility that God can do these things in your life. Amen. If you believe. If you trust Him. The straight path is not always easy. But our Heavenly Father is on the road that leads us away from sin into amazing fellowship. The Bible says that those who know your name will trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. So then the question becomes, do you know him? Do you know Jesus? I know some of us have said the sinner's prayer, but do you know him? Are you filled with his spirit? Can you reach into this arsenal called the word and pull out something for your situation? Can you pray in the Spirit when you don't know what to do? Can you trust Him? Have you taken the time to get to know Him? Psalm 32 says, Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy, shall encompass him about. That means he's going to circle you with his mercy. Surround you with his mercy. What a way to walk this earth surrounded by the Lord's mercy. Nothing can penetrate the Lord's hedge of mercy. Psalm 54 says in God I will praise his worth. Yes. In God, I have put my trust. Yes. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Amen. Psalm 84 says, blessed is the man who trusts in him. And I can go on and on. Like I said, 100 and, over 180 passages about trusting the Lord. You can find him yes. in the book. Amen. As I close, I want to invite you to come to the altar. I don't want you to come in empty-handed, though. I want to give you an opportunity to bring your burdens to the Lord and leave them here. And when, I, when you walk out this time, I don't want you to take them with you. I want you to trust that he is going to handle whatever situation you're facing. I want you to know that he's here to encircle you with his love and his mercy. He's here today. Do you believe that? Are you ready? to leave your burdens at the altar. I'm going to ask the pastors and the ministers to come forward. Church, I'm just going to ask you all to, to come forward. And I want you to leave some stuff here at the altar. 